Welcome to the Love Them Knives channel, LTK here. We got the, uh, <clears throat> we got that tripod cranked way up, long way down here to the table, but we needed, we needed the, uh, to back it up a bit, because this ain't no little sissy knife. This ain't, nope, it's bigger than that. Got this knife, Bark River. Escanaba, Michigan, U.S. of A, Upper Peninsula, Michigan. I was up there a couple times when I was a young kid, but not since then. And so, yes, I've pulled this out before, but it's like, contact us on Facebook. There you go, Bark River Knives. And what's in the packaging? Get out of here. This knife. Take the sheath off of it. 1909 Michigan Bowie. Let's throw the packaging to the side for a minute. Yikes. There you go. Uh, oh, that's the container. There you go. They got their advertising on it too. 1909 Michigan Bowie. A2 Steel. Escanaba USA. You like that antique ivory micarta? handle polished aluminum pommel nice brass guard big knife big knife you know i was just looking at the bark river knives and i talked to one of my buddies uh wes up in new york and he's big on bark river and you know he was telling me he he's a subscriber as well as i am to apostle p's uh network and apostle p went up and did an interview with Mike Stewart, who's the owner of Bark River, and took a little tour around their production facility, which I think has probably changed now because he was in the process of adding some square footage to his building in Escanaba, Michigan. But I mean, Bark River was kind of the original place where they started it up. Uh, and then they moved to Escanaba to a more, you know, suitable industrial building. Wow, but this knife is, uh, man, this micarta handle on here is so smooth and beautiful. It is just incredible. I love the ivory micarta. I'm really drawn to that. I don't know why, but it's, it's the color I prefer. So, wow, glossy, beautiful. And then you got this little bit of inlay here. And up here. That's a big old chunk of A2, isn't it? In any case, it's not like I'm going to run outside and chop a tree down in my yard because that would not be a good thing. I, actually, the landscape does not need any modifications right now. Uh, and since I live in the burbs, yeah, I'm not going to go out. Especially in late July in the Sonoran Desert. No. 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 <laughs> Chop down a big tall cactus, the ranger comes up. You know that, yeah, you know that cactus is federally protected, right? <laughs> That's a saguaro. Oh my God. So in any case, yeah, but this is so cool. I mean, it's just, I mean, if, if you were going to go out camping, which I plan on trying to get up to the White Mountains to do that, Someday, that's on my bucket list. But, I mean, as far as a trail knife, uh, for chopping and heavy work, yeah. I mean, as far as really a functional knife, if you were living off-grid and stuff, yeah, this would be one choice. And then you'd want something smaller that you could do skinning and and just normal type chores with because this is just too big for a lot of things but wow what a design huh i mean i just and the michigan buoy comes in a different blade design as well without this buoy well <laughs> really kind of doesn't have this buoy grind up here in any case if you look at this grind it looks pretty good, actually. I mean, they hand grind their knives. And that looks pretty symmetrical. And I was looking at, you know, that looks really good. 
And I think these are those convex grinds, you know, it's like, I don't know if it's a 5% angle or whatever it is, but it's, you know, it's a curved grind coming up on that edge. So, you know, you can't just flat stone it with your KME. You got to get that. You can get that convex a KME sharpening system. I'm sorry, I'm maybe talking uh, terms that you're not familiar with. But uh, yeah, they make a convex rod now for KME systems. It's a fixed blade, uh, fixed sharpening system where you can maintain a convex. But these, you know, are knocked out by hand. So big knife and I got I got this knife and I thought I mean where the hell's the sheath I thought they were gonna have a sheath there was two boxes two boxes there's the sheath smell of vision wow now that's leather that is leather look at that sheath is that sweet oh my god this is, uh, yeah, that's a quality piece right there. Haven't ever put the knife in the sheath yet, but I thought I'd pull it out and kind of give you the, you know. Wow. Interesting. I just, I, I'm not necessarily going to do anything special. There's not a lot of tricks to a fixed blade knife. But I just wanted to run this on my channel to just uh, kind of give you a look at what these knives are like, you know, as far as fit and finish goes. The blade stock is thick. Big old blade stock. I'm going to check this out. So basically quarter inch, right? 0.250 would be quarter inch. Which is just right at six millimeters. Right there. Wow. Big old dog. Let me see if I can get some calipers around this handle. Hey, you got a handle you can get a hold of. Wow. So almost a full inch across. About 25 millimeters thick. Oop. Getting a little fatter in this area. 26. There you are, full inch. Whew. Feels good in the hand, it really does. Wow, this is powerful. This is fairly heavy too. Let me try and move some stuff out of the way uh, so I can actually get my scale out here and we could weigh this up. Big old knife though. Uh, well, how big? Well, basically a 10 inch blade and 15 and a half overall, which is about 39 and a half centimeters. And you've got a 25 centimeter long blade. Isn't that crazy? I mean, a big folding knife on my uh, channel would be 23 centimeters. This blade is... Uh, Longer than a big, huge folding knife would be. Total length. Just the blade. Wow. Over 15 inches. So that's a big dog. That's a big dog. How much does it weigh? And let's put it on the scales. One pound, three ounces. That's not horrible. That's not horrible. So what is that in metrics? 539 grams <laughs> one pound three ounces oh, yes it is quarter inch big old dog right, let's see if it'll cut a piece of paper huh I mean we can at least do that in here in the indoors okay yeah you remember my Randall knife review I couldn't do this with that Randall but they're putting an edge on this one. Uh, yeah. Whoop. That's what you get. You attack it too quick. Just like that. 
I'd say it's sharp. I'd say it's got a real sharp edge. Ugh. Gotta do some house cleaning. All right. Big knife. Love that. You can do this in a little bit different. Uh, and let me, let me pull just off a knife center here so you can get kind of an idea. 284, 285 bucks basically is retail and in stock as of today at least. And there's your specs. Overall length, uh, blade length, A2. You know, there's your uh, 58 HRC, clip point, antique ivory, aluminum pommel, and uh, brass finger guard. Pretty cool, huh? But I'm going to uh, put... Uh, links to those videos that Apostle P did where he interviewed Mike Stewart and then he toured the shop and then you see how they how they make these knives up there kind of some of the history and that kind of thing I just think it's fascinating viewing and these are you know as far as I'm concerned I mean these are real user knives I mean they're not five six seven hundred dollar knives uh, it's close to three, but this is a big, huge dog. A lot of their knives are, you know, maybe even under 200 up into the low twos and stuff like that. So not horribly, horribly expensive. And I mean, if you look at their lineup of knives, I mean, you'll see that they have some of the smaller knives like the Bravo, the Bravo 2 and, and all these kind of uh, Fox River and s some of these others that are uh, like CPM, like 3, 3V steel, uh, they're CPM S35VN, LMAX, 154CM. I mean, they have different types of steel that they're using for different knives. I want to get one of their small knives. I want to get one that's like that long, total length, that I could just slide in my pocket in the leather sheath. You know, not even put it on my belt. Just a real small. They have some that are like under seven inches overall. You know, that's a small knife, fixed blade. And, you know, like LMAX or S35VN would be cool. I mean, just saying. I mean, that's something you could actually carry. Walk into the... <laughs> Yeah, you walk into uh, Buffalo Wild Wings with this baby strapped to your belt. Yeah, I, I think you're going to get some looks, actually. Uh, maybe not in the UP of Michigan. But, yeah, around here, probably going to get some uh, some people kind <laughs> of looking you over. Especially in these days and times when uh, people uh, act out. In any case, so... I just thought, I just thought I'd get this. I mean, I just had to feel it in my hand. I just, I mean, the grind on it's really good. It's really sharp. I mean, this is, I really like it. This is something you could have and use for years and pass down, you know, to the family, to your son, whatever. Just amazing. I love the workmanship. You know, I guess Mike Stewart, I mean, he was a co-founder of uh, Blackjack Knives and then also uh, brought Marbles Knives up and, and manufacturing their knives in the U.S. But then when they decided they were going to move their production to China, that's when he started Bark River. So, I mean, the uh, guy's been around the block, done a lot of stuff, knows about heat treat, Knows his metals, knows everything. You know, uh, it's just a really sharp guy. And uh, those are interesting videos to watch. But he's got a, a line of knives, different types of handle uh, configurations as far as, you know, materials being used, different types of configurations on the blades, different sizes, shapes. I mean, I don't know how many models he's got, but maybe 
30 or more different models of knives, maybe more than that. I mean, it's just pages and pages I go through. And then you can get them in different types of handle materials, handle colors, uh, you know, blade materials. So, I mean, even each model has different iterations of it. So it's fascinating. I really like it. I hope you enjoyed this. I mean, you want to, should we measure it? Should we compare it to the, <laughs> to the Manex? There you go. How's that working for you? Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, it's crazy. It really is. It's a big knife. But this is your, uh, yeah. I think this is a, this would hold up to a lot of heavy use. And that's what they're made for. But I mean, the way it feels in the hand, and this ivory micarta is smooth as glass, which maybe is not your best thing, but I mean, may, most times you're probably gonna be using this with gloves. And also, I mean, you've got the guard. Uh, and, you know, you can make good contact with this knife. So I don't know. I don't know that it has to be all kind of heavy, heavy grained and grooved to be able to hold on to it. Only when it's 112 degrees and your hands sweaty. Other than that, not a problem. Take care, my friends. Appreciate you hanging out with me and just uh, having a glance and a laugh and uh, interesting look see at the 1909 Michigan Bowie Bark River. Beautiful knife, incredible sheath. Uh, just just what a wonderful setup. Looks like the grind's really great. Heavy knife, but you know, just a little over a pound. That's that's not bad. Beautiful design though. That's why I got it. Just the design and then that polished pommel and everything. This thing is really put together. Like it a lot. Take care. Thanks for joining me. You know what we do here. We love them knives. Stay sharp.